What's up y'all? Today I'm down here in Charleston, South Carolina at Hadrill's Point Tackle Shop. So y'all, today I'm down here with Joe Kovaleski and shop manager, and today we're gonna talk about sheep's head, right? Absolutely. Sheep head. How do you say it? Sheep's head. Sheep's head. There sheep's you go. Sheep's head get their name because their teeth mouth structure is that like a sheep. Really? Actually, yes. Interesting. Yes. So you guys, today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a fun video helping y'all catch more sheep's head. Bigger sheep's head, smaller, whatever. You guys, they're some of the most tastiest fish out there. But I know you got some rigs and you got some stuff. Absolutely. So where do you want to start? I'm going to go over just a few of my favorite rigs that I like to use here in Charleston. Uh, one of them is going to be a modified version of Carolina rig. One of the things that I like to do is obviously we're going to have an egg sinker and we're going to have a hook. That's a Carolina rig. The key to this rig, and I'm going to use this rig anywhere from inshore to our near shore wrecks, 30, 40, 50 feet of water. And with a traditional Carolina rig, you're gonna have an egg sinker that is going to slide. I want that not to slide. So you're not even using a two-way swivel? No. That's awesome. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna establish kind of where I want this not to be. I have a whole lot of line here. Um, normally I would actually put my egg sinker on first and then tie my knot, uh -huh. but that's kind of all the leader that I want on this rig. Okay. So I fed that through. Uh -huh. I'm going to come through again right there if I can find it. Ta-da! So what happens now is this actually... So you just fed it through? Three times. Okay. But notice now... You've got a fiddler crab on the loose. <laughs> it's not sliding. Yeah, so just literally three times. Three times through is not sliding now. I love this in deeper water applications. Right. Because now what's going to happen, as I'm allowing my egg sinker to fall towards the bottom, <laughs> I'm going to let that egg sinker hit. Yep. Now I'm going to lift my rod tip up. Now I don't have a whole lot of lead. Right. If anything touches that, I'm immediately feeling that at the rod tip. Yep. Lift up, set the hook. Yep. So having that controlled slip really works well. The other thing I love about this rig is, should I break off on some structure, I'm generally gonna lose by the hook right here. Uh -huh. I can actually loosen up this line. Yeah. Let some more out and retie my hook. Just so y'all can see how easy this is. So Joe just took, for all intents and purposes, just an egg weight and just, so this is how you do it, right? You yeah, pull absolutely. it through go and then through. just go through again. And then go through one more time. Just pull it through. That's it. And then one more time. One more time. And I'm using this rig inshore with maybe 15 pound fluorocarbon, 20 pound fluorocarbon, and it works just the same as this right just here. Just like that. Absolutely. Yeah, then you awesome. tie your hook on, and yep. like I said, I want to give myself maybe cool. 10, maybe 12 inches a liter, that's it. I okay. don't want a whole lot of play in it. Right. I want the moment they're touching that fiddler crab, I want to feel it through the rod. Absolutely. So that's the first rig that you like to use. Absolutely. So, okay, let's pause for a second and talk about like just some general like sheep's head like tactics <laughs> for what do you look for like structure of course, right? It's structure, absolutely. One, 100%. So uh, year round here, I'm looking for adequate depth. Uh -huh. In the summertime, they will go shallower, but I'm looking for docks that are still gonna hold at a low tide three, four feet of water. Minimum. Okay. How much do you think sheep's head like move like with, and so down here in Charleston, y'all have that crazy tide swing. How yeah. much do you think that, cause I think sheep's head, correct me if I'm wrong, they kind of like, you know, pick a, a deeper dock or a, a bridge with that tide, you know, like trout might move larger distances with the tides or maybe even reds, but sheep's head, what's your opinion on sheep's that? Sheep's head, they stick right by the same structure. Yeah, so during the day, it's typically, they're just gonna stick right there. They're gonna stick on the back side of structure on the okay. protected side. Right. They're not fond of heavy current. They don't like facing in the current like maybe a trout would. So they love hiding in that smooth water behind right. structure. Right. When the tide swings, they'll, yeah. I've watched them literally go around to the back side of the same structure they're on. Yeah. And start feeding on that side of that structure. Cool. So those are some of the things. Number one, you're looking for the structure. Is there anything when you're evaluating, say like you go to a new fishery, are you looking at like older docks with more barnacle growth? The more barnacles, like obviously, yeah, definitely the better. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anything else that you look for, just you know, again, like 
being like that really stands out like a really good sheep's head spot that about like depth changes or things like that like, uh, i don't know if that's necessarily as much as well obviously you need some depth change correct. you want to have a little bit deeper water nearby okay uh so that even on a king tide with our crazy high tides come a crazy low tide so it's right. amazing that places that had five feet of water earlier in the day have zero right so so definitely you can see some structure there the other thing is to watch for those fish they will they if the water clarity is decent you will see them feeding on those pilings really and absolutely sight fish and do you ever use you see people using like actual barnacles for bait or things barnacles, like that barnacles clams mussels uh -huh. oysters uh, -huh. uh sand fleas yeah absolutely if you could paint like maybe a few different scenarios of what people can look for for like a great sheep's head spot like what 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 do you think would just be like a few like different picturesque like perfect places that you'd be like i feel really confident there'd be sheep's head in you know this type of a dock that type of a just bridge. just good docks uh f fine docks that have big boats on them really it's deeper, deeper water, water. <laughs> absolutely okay yeah that's one thing that you can absolutely do uh, and just look again look at that structure look at the amount of barnacle growth uh, one of the things I love telling folks here is that when you're going fishing go out on a low tide you're gonna see a whole lot of things that you didn't see before absolutely. you'll find places where you're catching fish and you didn't know why you were catching fish in those yeah. places you go out low tide and you see that massive oyster bar out there and realize oh that's why those fish are there so what about current though with you know sheephead like you know flounder love current um you know there's a few fish that that really associate themselves to that are you looking for or even like let's say you're fishing a bridge are you are you trying to fish maybe the the tail end of a moving tide or you're looking for that ripping current what do you think i'm just looking for movement of tide i often find that i'm catching fish on an inbound tide okay. i'm catching fish on an outbound it's that slack tide in between whether it's at the high tide or yeah. at the low tide right. they kind of calm down a little bit and it's probably their transition to going to the other side uh -huh. that you continue to fish the side you're on and nothing's going on yeah but as soon as i see that tide swing in the other direction i'm going to move to the other side of those of, of that structure absolutely so then how about like water temps and talking about like the seasonality so you were hinting at that before so yeah can you talk a little bit about maybe like the water temps that you look for or how they you know kind of move or behave throughout the year yeah so uh, yeah, as our temperatures get inshore i would say probably in the mid 60s near 70 mm -hmm. you're going to find them moving inshore okay and then they're going to spread out throughout our creeks throughout our rivers uh -huh. and they will spread out amongst all the dock structure all the bridge structure they really go just about everywhere okay um, and then they will be here all summer long okay and then we'll see uh again as we approach getting decked in in the 60s again then you'll see that transition out to river mouths mm -hmm. like here at the folly river mm -hmm. it's kind of the last place they're going to go before they head offshore and then the jetties you'll see them kind of mid-fall mm -hmm. really congregate out the jetties and then they make that push offshore for their spawn so they'll spawn offshore yes really yeah and then what time of what time of year are they typically spawning right now right, right now. now winter time yep and so is that where some people are targeting like bigger sheephead like in the winter time at these near shore wrecks absolutely yeah you find any kind of uh, sunken structure in 35 to 60 feet of water right. this time of year and you'll find a lot of sheep's head there wow but the other thing too is that you said that you all in charleston you have a year round for inshore yeah there are definitely bridges that hold deeper water uh -huh. and that's kind of what you're looking for although i have some anglers and local charter captains that are finding them back in the creeks i suspect that they're probably finding them in closer again to deeper water places where they can go where we do get that cold snap they can yeah. go a little deep they can find a moderate temperature and just kind of hang there for a while cool so that's it definitely looking for structure jetties docks you like a moving current moving Absolutely. tide and anything else generalities for a sheephead you got to get out there and you got to put a bait in the water I mean, that's, <laughs> that's exactly uh, right. and it's funny like you you'll literally i've been out places where i didn't think there was that much structure yeah you drop down you start getting hit and then again like you said you go out like in a, at a low tide and you're like i didn't even know that rock structure was there uh and start catching them do you ever drift across like a oyster bed or anything like that 
I don't often uh, because I am bumping bottom and right. I find I'm going to lose a lot of rigs. Right. Uh, so using these rigs I'm going to show, yeah. not so much. Now okay. you can use a, like a popping cork right. and then like along the jetties here in Charleston, we will throw a popping cork right up against those rocks and let that fiddler crab just kind of yeah. bounce right along the edge of those rocks. Definitely catch fish that way. Cool. Yeah, let's check yeah. out some of the other rigs okay. that you wanted to show. Absolutely. Before these fiddler crabs escape from this uh, little <laughs> cup here. So I'm going to utilize the same hook just for purposes of sh demonstration. Drop shot rig. For those folks using uh, kayaks, for those folks who are actually standing on dock structure or on bridges, if you're here in Charleston, you're fishing the Mount Pleasant Pier where you're directly over the pilings. I love a drop shot rig. All right, so we'll get a close up here. Yeah. So you're gonna do a polymer knot? I am gonna do a big Palomar knot. Okay. And what do I mean by big? A lot of tag in, a right? A lot of tag in. This is the easiest way to do a drop shot rig. So you like this drop shot rig when you're fishing, say like, you're fishing from a bridge, on the bridge. Strictly right Straight above the down. structure. Kayak fishing, this is a fantastic way to go about this. And you can make this tag end on this Palomar knot as long as you want, according yeah. to tide depth. Sure. And even, so a lot of pier anglers, this would be the best, Absolutely. probably one of the great pier. So I've done this Palomar knot with, I don't know, probably a little less than a foot of tag end. Uh -huh. Uh, and I've tied it with four feet of tag end, depending on where I've been. Wow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tag end of this Palomar knot and okay. put it back down through the eye of that hook. And what that is going to do is to create that right there. So what I've done is I've pulled the tag end back through the eye of the hook. And as you can see, that hook is sitting in a great position right now uh -huh. to really get a good hook set. And then at the base of that tag, I love using a bell sinker just because you can tie easily to that. And that weight is just gonna go on the bottom. I guess you could probably use a pyramid sinker. I'm not really concerned about the knot here as much, but I'll probably just do a little quick two or three turn uni knot, and that'll be sufficient to hold that. So what this allows me to do That's is cool. now get that right against structure. Let's we'll right. see this spool line with structure. Yeah that that hook is sitting out. Right. That fiddler crab's right on there. And those sheep's head are feeding right on those pillars. So that's that's perfect right there. Because a lot of people, I think, you know, they think that you have to have line that comes off or whatever. But you, this right here, with the hook just like that on the line. Just like that? Perfect. You can see it's sitting right in the per perfect position for a hook set. Yeah. And I will, one thing I have noticed with sheep's head is they love to move up the columns as the tide comes in. Yep. So places that were high and dry, yeah. similar to redfish coming up into a marsh. Pillars that were, or pilings that were completely out of the water half an hour ago are yeah. now starting to get submerged. And I do witness those, those sheep's head moving up higher in the water column. Here's a question for you yeah. when you talk about that. There's some people who say, that when they're fishing like a deeper bridge or a deeper structure with like a piling that's running all the way down, mm -hmm. do you like to start at the bottom and then do you kind of do like one, you know what I mean? Do you like raise your rod, you know what I mean? Or how do you work your way up yeah. or down a water Yeah, absolutely. Column? I do do that. So I will let it get down to the bottom. Uh -huh. I'll work it there for a while if okay. I'm not getting bites make a few cranks, yep. keep it in that area. Yep. I love this drop shot rig, like I said, even if I'm in a boat and I'm really close to that structure, I love working that because it allows yeah. me to work the entire water column all the way up to the water line. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the hook that you'll use is gonna be just adjust per the size of, oh, we got our fiddler crab running Oh, away. we got a runner. <laughs> uh, be like a, just adjust it like, I love it, just a small J hook. Like uh -huh. here I have a size two owner Gorilla Light. I may go to a size one. I may even go to a one knot, but I rarely go bigger than really a size one. And you were even telling me before that you've caught some of your biggest fish on those smaller hooks, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite spade fish hooks too. That's awesome. Yeah. Sweet. What other rigs do you like to use? Jig heads. Yep. A Bottom variety sweeper. of jig heads. Bottom sweepers, fantastic. Uh, we've carried their product here in the shop for two years. 
fantastic. Uh, Eye Strike makes that gel bait. Yep. One other great one. I've actually used the finesse shroom head from Z Man. I've not bent that hook yet. That's and it's awesome. a very good way. This is a fantastic, jig heads are a fantastic way for those kind of just learning to sheep's head fish because there's no slack in this in this setup whatsoever. You have tight line to your jig head. Yeah. You feel bites very instantly on a jig head bite. So that's what the package looks like. And I'll leave a link in this video, y'all, but that's a bottom sweeper jig. And um, is there a weight of a bottom sweeper that you like to use, like, or a size? Any? Depending on depth, yep. depending on current. Yep. I want to go as light as I can get. Sure. But there are times where it's going to require just one and a half, three okay. quarters. So, uh, th and that would be absolutely fine in most situations. Probably the half inshore in Charleston would yeah. be best. Right. But if you're fishing the base of one of the big bridges where you're encountering more current, you may need to go to the one ounce. Yeah. But that's going to be dictated based on current and depth that you're at. Last thing is, so some of the gear. So I've this is what I kind of brought for our fishery in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, sometimes, you know, we were talking about combat fishing. So when I'm doing heavier, you know, I've got my, do you, do you use rods that are a little bit more heavier or stout like this, or do you kind of stick to more of the lighter? I have all really. So you I do? may use a seven foot medium heavy uh -huh. if I'm near some structure. I might go 20, maybe even 30 pound braid on that. Yeah. For most of the fishing inshore here, it's probably a seven foot medium or even a medium light. Yeah. A 2,500 size spinning reel or yeah. 3,000. So uh, like something like this. pound braid. Yeah, just like a normal trout rod. Normal trout, redfish, flounder. Yeah. Everything in Charleston's caught on that same setup. Yeah, that's Absolutely. awesome. So yeah, so just to kind of compare and contrast, so like for, you know, I would say this is an excellent sheephead uh, setup right here, y'all. It's, you know, just a normal trout rod, 2,500 to 3,000. That's kind of what you were saying that Perfect. you like to use. Absolutely. 10 to 15, even 20 pound test. And then if you're going out to some of those near shore wrecks or deeper bridges, this is, I've got a 4,000 on mine yeah. in about 30 pound test. Yeah. And then a rod that's a little bit beefier right here. A little here. beefier. I so. do like a rod that's light in the hand. Yeah. I do like a very fast action rod. Uh, there are situations here in Charleston where you might use a moderate action rod when you're lobbing shrimp or a popping cork towards a grass line. Yeah. But with these, I like a very stout, very fast rod. Yeah. Fast action that I can feel that nibble directly and get up and pick up the slack in that line. For bait for a sheephead, like, you know, you've got shrimp, fiddler crabs, and then even like blue crabs, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can quarter a chunk of blue crab out there for, for them, yes. Do you have any sort of preference for you personally? Fiddlers are my favorite. Fiddlers are your favorite. Fiddlers are my favorite. Okay. They, yeah. Uh, winter time when fiddlers are scarce here, uh, I may even dig up some clams. Clams right. work really well in the winter time here. Okay. But if I have fiddlers, I'm fishing fiddlers every time. Every time. Every time. Do you ever stack? And we don't have to because I know. For so Joe's the manager of Hadrill's Point, and these are high in demand right now, right? Very much so. <laughs> yes. Yes. So this maybe is, we don't uh, have to rig one up. But do you ever like stack like two of them, or do you just kind of? I do one? not. I do one. I like a very natural presentation. I do try to use the smallest hook that I can do. Right. Uh, we do have times here, particularly in the winter time, right now. Our waters are crystal clear. It's right. like Florida clear water. Yeah. I have seen sheep's head back off of 20 pound fluorocarbon. The moment you switch to 12 pound fluoro, they eat. And I never thought I would see a fish that would be line shy of yeah. a fluorocarbon leader, but they get very finicky. So they do have bigger eyes, you know, and I'll, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Even like permit yeah. or some of those fish that have bigger eyes, I personally, you know, I think it does make a, a difference. I've watched sheep's head actually swim and stare at it like they're yeah. they're analyzing it right they're not just going up and whacking it like perhaps maybe a redfish would that they're analyzing the situation so i don't know how yeah. they're intelligent little fishes let's talk about the one of the more popular things when it comes to sheephead fishing is how to like set the hook there's some people who think you know hey it, yes a sheephead does have that subtle bite to it yes but you know like what i think that's something that, that we should definitely talk about you know is Actually, hand me one of those rods a second. I'll show okay. you. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make, I don't want to step on anything back here, is a lot of folks grow up bass fishing. Right. And if you're working a rubber worm, you generally feel a bump. You then dip the rod and just then you thrilled. set the hook. Yep. With a sheep's head rig, when you dip the rod, the hook falls out of their mouth every time. 
So one of the biggest things I could show people that gets them going and catching sheep's head, I keep the rod tip low all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep tension on that line. Like I said, with these rigs, I don't like a lot of, of slack. Yep. So I'm gonna keep tension. I'm gonna feel that egg sinker. The uh -huh. moment I feel any extra tension, I'm lifting up. Just and come it's tight. not a wild hook set, it's just lifting. Just come tight, right? Come tight. Yeah. That's okay. it. How about your drag? Do you like to, just depending on what you, you know, like if you're fishing combat fishing, you are going to kind of lock it down. I a am bit, right? locking it down. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I don't really want to feel drag coming off. Like this is very, obviously very light right now. Yep. But I'm going to be giving it yeah. considerable amount of drag. Right. Um, I actually kind of judge the tension of my drag from here, which uh -huh. a lot of rod manufacturers are going to cringe when I do this. Uh huh. But I am. Yeah. I'm here. I'm still not pulling drag. I'm yes. comfortable with that because right. if I pull here, yeah. I'm still getting drag. Right. So I want hook bend. I don't want to hear drag in this situation because they are structure oriented. Yeah. Redfish, flounder, probably a different story. Trout, definitely a different story. But with sheepies, yeah. I, I, I need to get them out. Absolutely. Any other tackle shop secrets you can share with us on they Sheephead? They cost money. Uh, cost money. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Bait is not free. <laughs> no, it's a uh, rod tip low. Uh huh. Keeping, keeping, always keeping the sensation of your egg sinker or your jig head. Uh, one thing I have found that can make or break a deal uh -huh. is this claw. Okay. There are times where I've caught sheep's head with the claw attached. More often than not, I've seen them shy away from having that claw on them. So when you get the big male, this is a male, uh, I will remove that claw and then put the hook through. The places where I like to put the hook is actually right between those legs. So I'm going to go right between those legs. Okay. Right there. So not through the middle. I do not. I go through the side and right out the top of the shell. Awesome. That's definitely good to know because I've but, never heard that before. Yeah, I do. I've seen people actually go straight through the back and up the middle. Uh huh. I've always gone there. Always do well with it. Yeah. Do you ever use just the claw though? No. You don't? No. So that's it. And then do you ever use like a quarter chunk of blue crab ever? Absolutely. Or you do? Yeah. Yeah. We uh, even have uh, mud crabs here in Charleston. Yeah. Uh, and they're a bit, a bit bigger crab than these. I have also used the square back marsh or the wharf crabs. Okay. Absolutely work also. Any sort of crustacean is really going to get Absolutely. Fun, right? Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Any any anything else? Sheep's head fishing? I think we've covered it. I think we've covered it. That's Absolutely. It. All right, you guys. So we're down here, Hadrill's Point, Charleston, South Carolina. Joe, thanks a lot, man. Thank that you. was really, really Appreciate helpful. It. And yeah. hopefully that helps you all out. A little sheep's head seminar. If you guys come down to Charleston, then you guys know what to do, where to go. And if you guys are in Texas or anywhere else, please leave a comment on if there's other rigs or anything that y'all like to use in your fishery. So that's all I got for today. Peace out.